In this video, we're going to learn how to analyze YouTube comments. I'm gonna show you how to build an application like this, where you can both search and cluster comments to get a sense of what viewers are talking about. So we're gonna follow four steps. So we're gonna first get the comments. Second, put the comments into semantic space using an embedding algorithm. Then we're gonna search the comments using a similarity algorithm. And finally, we're gonna create clusters of comments based on their embeddings. Let's have a look at my Pi project file to see the dependencies that we're gonna be using. So notice we've got scikit-learn, we've got NumPy, Plotly, Alama, Pandas, the Python YouTube library client, and then Streamlit. Let's open app.py and commentsutil.py. And we're gonna import Streamlit, Pi YouTube, and a function from my comments util class. Let's have a look at the comments util class. So you can see we've got the get all comments thread function. Notice at the top, this one's gonna be cached by Streamlit on any of the parameters that don't have an underscore. So it's video ID and per page. And then to see how it works, if we look down into the wild tree loop, you can see we're calling on the API, the get comment threads function that gives us back a thread. We put it into the threads variable. We then grab the next page token, put that in the token variable. If there isn't a token, then we're done and we can exit. If there is, then we keep on looping until we've gone through all the pages. And finally, it returns an array of the threads. Let's come back. We're gonna give our page a title and we're gonna specify some styling to simplify the margins. And now we're gonna create a text input where you can paste in a video ID and then we're gonna render that to the screen. Once we've done that, we're gonna get our API key from the environment variable YouTube API key and then we're gonna initialize the API client. Now to get that API key, you need to go to your Google developer console under the APIs and services section and make sure that the YouTube Data API version three is enabled. So you can see for me there, it's got API enabled. Once you've done that, come back again, then click on the credentials, create credentials, API key, and it will generate you an API key. Copy that uh, and stick it in an environment variable. I mean, you can stick it directly in the file, but I'd suggest stick it in an environment variable. Okay, and once we've done that, then we're gonna call the get all comments thread function, passing in the API and the video ID, and we'll do 100 comments per page. And then we're gonna, go into those threads and pull out the comments, and then we'll put the comments onto the screen. Let's go to another tab and we're gonna start up our Streamlit app, and then let's go to the web browser. And so you can see here, we've got the video ID at the top, and the video that is defaulted to is one by Matt Williams on function calling in Alama. I'd suggest you have a look at Matt Williams' channel if you wanna learn about Alama, it's a really good resource for that. You can see at the top, we've got a comment by Matt uh, saying, hey, this is a contentious, video about function calling. You can see some other people are saying, hey, look, great video, I really liked it. If we then look down a little bit, you can see we've got some people saying output formatting is really necessary, but Langchain does it. Uh, and then we've got a few other comments as well. Next, we're going to create some embeddings. So you'll need to make sure that you've downloaded and installed a Llama. If you're on a Mac, this will already be running in the background, but just call a Llama serve to make sure that it's running. Let's go back to the file and we're gonna import the cosine similarity function. We're also gonna import a llama. Next, we're gonna create the create embeddings function that's gonna take in the comments. Again, we're gonna cache that. And then we're gonna iterate over the comments. We're gonna call the llama embeddings function. We'll be using the nomic embed embeddings algorithm. Now, if you don't have that installed, call llama pool nomic hyphen embed hyphen text and it will bring it down to your machine. And we're gonna be doing that for each comment. Once the function's defined, we'll call it and it will be in the embeddings variable. Okay, now we're gonna put a heading on the page, search and comments. We'll put another text box, this time for a search term. We're then gonna call the Alama embeddings function again on that search term. So we're getting an embedding for the search term. And then we're gonna call the cosine similarity function on the comment embeddings against the search embedding for each of them. And so what that will do is it will find the comments that are similar to the search term that we use. So in this case, it's I love this video. Let's have a quick look what that cosine similarity function looks like. So this is one I got from a video by Simon Willison. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. And now let's finally sort those results so that we get the ones with the biggest similarity on the top. And then we'll iterate through the results and print them to the screen. Let's come back to the web browser. And so we can see for the search term, I love this video, there are a bunch of people who have said great video, thank you, and so on. What about if we say, is this really function calling? So you can see that then comes up with other people talking about function calling. We've got Matt's initial comment. Uh, if we look down a bit, we can see that some people are saying, I was upset that this is how it works. And we've got a variety of other comments. Somebody mentions pedantic, 
Next, we're going to look at how to cluster the comments. So we're going to be using Plotly and NumPy to do this. So we'll create a clusters heading and then we're going to create a dendrogram off the embeddings. And what this does is it's going to create a hierarchical clustering off the embeddings. Okay, and then we're going to go to the web browser and have a look at the dendrogram. So you can see this is what it looks like. So you can see it's cutting it at different levels. At the top, we're cutting it into two. There's a lot more on the right hand side than the left hand side. It then cuts them down further and further until you end up with leaf nodes uh, everywhere. Let's come back to our app again. And we're going to import some functions from scikit-learn. And now we're going to put in a little slider so you can choose how many clusters you want to split up the space into. And we're going to create ourselves a function called compute clusters. We'll start by calling the linkage function. That's going to actually apply the clustering using the cosine similarity function. And then we're going to use cut tree and that's going to extract labels for each embedding based on the number of clusters that we passed in. We're then going to create a variable called groups and that's going to be a dictionary which has the label and then we're going to have a list of the comments. So we're just going to put the comments into their appropriate cluster. We'll then call the compute clusters function. We'll sort them in order so we get the biggest clusters first and then we'll iterate over them and again print them out to the screen. So if we have a look here you can see that the function calling stuff is the top. So most people were, were writing about function calling in this one. If we look at the next one, there's lots of people saying this is eye opening, great, great video. And I'm subscribed to the channel. And then if we go down, we've got some smaller clusters where they don't really have like an obvious similarity with each other. I thought let's try this with one other channel. So Matthew Berman is a big Gen AI YouTuber and he posts lots of really useful tutorials. So have a look at that channel as well. And something that he's been trying lately is putting the word shocks into all of the uh, titles. It's like kind of a, a bit of a YouTube meme, I suppose. Uh, so let's have a look at one of his videos where he's done that. So this is about OpenAI's Sora tool. So we'll copy the video ID and we'll paste it in and you can see it's, it's loaded in his video. And we're going to look, see if anybody has mentioned the word shocked. And you can see there's a bunch of shocks, right? So people have bought into this. They're like, hey, this is a truly a shock. The whole industry is really shocked. If we look down a little bit, you can see the clusters. So there's way more clusters here because uh, Matthew gets a lot more comments uh, on his videos. And let's, so let's say, hey, I want to cut this up into 20. Uh, and you can see, hey, look, everybody needs to look at this. This is kind of amazing. It's sort of video games, physics simulation. If we look down a bit, we talk, it sort of talks about Sam Altman and his chip factory. If we come down a little bit more, then we've got a cluster of everybody being shocked. And then you can sort of see there's a bunch of other comments as well. So I'd love to know what you think about this video. So let me know in the comments below. I do try to read and reply to as many as I can. In particular, I'm curious, what else should we do uh, with this application? And if you liked this video, you might also like this one up here where I showed Fast Embed, which is another library that you can use to execute various embedding algorithms. And I'll see you in the next video.